Jeremy Cook here, and some time ago I bought a 60 watt red and black laser as they call them. These things are really great, but you can't just plop them in your shop and expect them to, to work. You actually have to go through some setup process. I went through some of this in a previous video, which I'll link in the upper right hand corner, but this video concentrates specifically on fume extraction, something that I didn't feel like I got quite right in the other video. It comes with the fume extractor as shown here, but I didn't really feel great about just pumping raw raw smoke out to my neighborhood. So instead I bought this 80 watt filter that has a, you know, really does seem to do a really good job. It's got a carbon filter and I think, I think I have a filter or something. It does a good job of that, but the thing is it doesn't quite suck in as much air as I, I had hoped. You can see kind of some of the process, setup process here, put it there and then just have it going out the garage. First thing I did, I made this donut type thing that basically puts the air in and obviously you're going to have a lot of turbulence here. My first thought was that if I made something a little bit more, a little bit more of an angle on it, I would get a lot better flow. And that probably worked some and I didn't really measure it that much, but I didn't quite get the flow that I was hoping to get. You know, basically I didn't get enough fume extraction. So if you want to see what I eventually did, you can fast forward to around the 430 mark and you know, you'll see it. But if you want to see the process, keep, keep following along. So I, I took that that off and made this. It's got a uh, hose clamp on the side. Yeah, you know, I thought that would work pretty well. It was a fairly large print for me. One thing I wasn't happy with it was the way it went on the nozzle. It didn't really stick on as, as well as I'd hoped. Even though it probably would have worked, I went back to the drawing board and made something with magnets. I was really actually pretty proud of this, even though it didn't quite work as well as I'd hoped. It's got these little slots here so you can embed the magnets when you're doing it. The one mistake that I made that you'll see a little bit later is when you're trying to embed something on a printer, you need to make sure everything is locked in place. So there's an M84 command on your printer that you need to put in. And you know, if you don't do that, then, then the bed can just fall in the case of mine. One thing I did do that I think was a good idea is I made these tiny little, you know, mini, mini test units. Wow, that didn't work too well. But anyway, these little test units, you can put the magnets in just to make sure it it works out pretty well. In the end, I think these will be useful for fixturing stuff down, like if you need some magnets or whatever. I don't actually recommend putting the magnets on the surface of your laser cutter because they tend to scratch it up. They're just so, so powerful. Anyway, this is one of the tests and this is where I made a mistake because after I printed this out and tried to embed the magnets, the bed just fell down and I just couldn't get it, couldn't get it right. Either way though, it gave me a chance to test out the magnets, how they would fit and if they would actually actually grip on the fume extractor well. Looks pretty good. So after after that, I went and made what's probably the biggest print I've ever made. You know, you can see that there it's, let's see, print time left 5.5 hours. I mean, it's, it's a long, long print. Nonetheless, after that was done, I uh, finished off with XTC 3D, you know, just to make sure it was nice and smooth and looks, looks great. I mean, I thought this would work great, but you know, as I said, it wasn't as good as I had hoped. Also, it didn't, didn't stay on quite as well. I should have double out up the magnets, but instead I used this Cat5 cable because, you know, I guess it's as good as rope here. I was taking a bit of a cue off my CNC router fume extraction, which I'll put a link to that in the upper right hand corner. That worked, worked quite well as well. Fasten that down and after that, after that, the magnets held it in pretty nicely. Nonetheless though, you know, the fume extraction, I got a 5.9, about six miles an hour, which works out to be about a air change every five seconds. Apparently that wasn't good enough. So as it turns out, or as I knew, the, the fume extractor that it came with, it actually does, is quite a bit more powerful. At least that's what it seemed like. So at that point it was back to the drawing board because even though I didn't, wasn't crazy about pumping just these fumes out to the neighborhood, I certainly wasn't gonna have it in my garage. So here's what I came up with on Fusion 360. That's that's designed. If there's some some demand for it, I can put that put that up. Just just let me know. In the end, what I ended up building was a simplified version of this. It's about 15 inches high and 13 inches wide. 
It's basically just a box that pumps the air or sucks the air through an, a household 12 by 12 HVAC filter. This uh, certainly you wouldn't want to run this inside your garage without putting it out of the garage, but I, I think for just kind of a general, not so smoggy filter, it seems to work, work out pretty well. I actually made this with some MDF that I had left over from, from a bench build that I recently did. Don't have a table saw, that would have made this a lot easier, I guess. But perhaps that's one of the selling points of this of this design. You could pretty much make it out of anything because essentially it's just a box. You put it together like this, use some wood glue on the sides. I didn't even use the proper clamps for it, even though I should have maybe 3D printed some or, or bought some. Once I finally had that lined up, yeah, you can see the filter just drops in. Little glue here, little glue there, connect it together, and more on the edges. Masking tape helped helped hold it together, as well as some ratchet strap straps that I put on later. And the bottom was glued on as well. This was actually, the bottom was actually two pieces of wood that I had to stick together. Again, this was all just scraps that I had left over from, from the desk that it's actually being built on right now. Hopefully I can do a video on that at some point in the future because I'm really happy with it. Goes on that nicely. And inside you can just see it's, it's drying. So with this, basically I split up the top between the, the part that we would be stuck there and the part that I would take off to put the, the filter in. Basically, I just take it from the side and put it in. Thought that would be better for sealing. Here's the nozzle that I printed out. It has a little, little edge on it so that when you, it's kind of like a flange on it. So when you put it in, you don't have to have the actual hole very exact. You can just kind of cut it, cut it by hand and it'll be, be taken care of by the, by the glue or hot glue or whatever you use for it. Obviously I could have used my CNC router or my laser cutter, but well, you know, use what's easiest at the time, I guess. Still looks pretty good. And that's the other side. Probably would have printed them both, both shorter, but hindsight's 2020, I guess. Looking good. And that one fits on there nicely as well. Rather than using more more wood as I had it kind of in the CAD design, I decided to use this MDF, spare MDF that I had lying around, cut out the middle of it as kind of a bridge for the exit chute. And kind of to explain this, basically it's gonna be sucking out the bottom from the, from the blower. The blower is gonna suck from the bottom and then pull in from the top. That way, even if there's a little bit of leakage on the top, hopefully it won't just get out to the environment too much, or hopefully it'll go mostly through the filter. These edges are just some scraps that I had left over. Really worked out nicely. And this scrap went there. Looking good. And look at that, it fits nicely on there. One side of this is glued on, it'll just stay there at all times, while the other one, I can kind of, kind of seal it with it. Put some glue on there and I'll put some, some hot glue on it later. Looking good. And just kind of for the aerodynamics, I printed out these these cool uh, half pipe looking things. Kind of looks like a wave when it goes, when it prints like this. Looking good, and then inserted them one side and the other. The idea is that it, it'll duct the air as it goes in and you just make it a little bit less turbulent. Should have tested it before and after on this, but well, I guess I just didn't. There's the top and then there's the bottom where it sucks out all the fumes and hopefully makes my shop environment Nice and clean. Put it on my rack, looking good. And then there's the, the blower that'll suck it out. Had to lift this up a little bit with some, some stuff that I had lying around the garage. Actually got it pretty close, so all I had to do was use duct tape to attach that to the fume extractor. Another cut with a Dremel tool and got the extraction hose in. Took a little bit of effort to get it in there, but once it was, locked it down with the hose clamp. And of course you get the HVAC filter and then a magnetic attachment for the exit chute. And then there's the duct tape for the output. Looking good and seems to seal pretty well. 
So after all that, the airspeed was about 25 miles an hour or four times as effective. And you're getting air change about one, about every 1.2 seconds. So overall, it should keep the, the garage much cleaner. And as far as the output, it's not particularly dirty. I mean, it looks, looks just fine. I'm sure there's some small particles, but you know, as long as it's not totally filthy, I'm cool with that. Also took some shots of the fume extraction from inside. You can see it going, some of the fumes coming out. And no, it's not totally coordinated between what's cutting and what's going out, but you know, little little TV magic for you guys, I guess. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for, for actual fume extraction for your for your laser. Obviously you don't want to pump all this these fumes out to your neighborhood. At least at least I didn't. Hope you enjoyed the video. I make all kinds of stuff, so most likely this, this laser will be used a lot more in my upcoming videos. If you enjoyed it, check out a poke around the channel, subscribe, like, leave a comment, etc, etc. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.